In this video, we're going to start taking a look at simplifying radicals that we can't simplify completely. When we take roots, we found out that we can divide the exponent by the index. However, we can't always divide the exponent by the index for the entire product. Instead, we might just have to divide the exponent by what we can, remember square roots is always a 2, and pull 1a out, and leaving the b behind inside the radical, and a outside the radical, and a b left over inside the radical. This same idea works for higher roots. As we divide n by n, we get 1, or a to the first, coming out of the radical. But the b is left inside the radical with the index. Also, sometimes when we divide, the number doesn't divide into the exponent evenly. If there is a remainder, the remainder will remain in the radical. This means the number 2 might come out a few times and also be left inside the radical a few times. Let's take a look at some examples where we have to find a radical of 72, for example. We again will find the prime factorization of 72, divisible by 2, 3, 6 times, 2, 18 times, 2, 9 times, 3, 3 times, and 3 once. 72 is 2 to the third power times 3 to the second power. Square root has an index of 2, and so to decide how many 2's are going to come out of the radical, we will divide the exponent by the index. 2 goes into 3 once. That means 1 2 comes out. However, when we do 2 into 3 once, we're left with a remainder of 1. This means 1 of these 2's, or 2 to the first power, is going to remain inside the radical. On the 3 squared, we can divide that exponent 2 by the index 2, and we find out that the number of 3's coming out is 1 perfectly. Coming out, we have 2 times 3, or 6, and left inside the radical is 2. 6 times the square root of 2 is the simplified form of the square root of 72. When we can't take the square root perfectly, we'll take the square root of what we can, leaving this other stuff behind in the radical. Let's take a look at another example. Here we want the third root of 750. Finding the prime factorization of 750, divisible by 2, 375 times, divisible by 3, 125 times, divisible by 5, 25 times, divisible by 5, 5 times, and 5 once. We get underneath the cube root 2 times 3 times 5 to the third power. Notice there is no exponent to divide with the 2 and 3 bases. The only exponent we have is on the 5 cubed. We divide the cube by the index of 3 to find out how many 5's come out. 3 divided by 3 tells us that one of them is going to come out. We have a 5 on the outside of the cube root. Left inside the cube root, we see 2 times 3. 2 times 3 is 6, and so our answer is 5 times the cube root of 6. We have to simplify the given square root expressions. In the first example, we have the square root of the quantity 9 plus 16. I included the order of operations below because notice how the first step in the order of operations is to perform all operations within grouping symbols or parentheses. And whenever we have a radical, in this case a square root, we treat the square root as if it is grouping the expression under the square root, which is called the radicand. To make this more clear, we can write the given square root as the square root and then parentheses, the quantity 9 plus 16. Simplifying inside the parentheses first, 9 plus 16 is equal to 25. This simplifies to the square root of 25. 25 is equal to 5 times 5. So if it's helpful, we can write this as the square root of 5 squared. The square root undoes the squaring. This simplifies to 1 factor of 5. A common mistake when simplifying these types of expressions is to think that the square root of the quantity a plus b equals the square root of a plus the square root of b, which is not true. In this case, we have the square root of the quantity 9 plus 16, which does not equal the square root of 9 plus
plus the square root of 16. So let's simplify both sides to show the left side is not equal to the right side. Well, we know the left side is equal to 5. We just simplify that. The square root of 9 is equal to 3, because 3 times 3 or 3 squared is equal to 9, plus the square root of 16 is equal to 4, because 4 times 4 or 4 squared equals 16. On the right side, we have 3 plus 4, which is 7, and of course, 5 does not equal 7. For our second example, again, the first step is to simplify the radicand with the expression under the square root. Let's go ahead and rewrite this as the square root and then in parentheses, the quantity 25 plus 144. Next, we simplify the radicand, or determine the sum under the square root. 25 plus 144 equals 169. This simplifies to the square root of 169. 169 is equal to 13 times 13, which means this is equal to the square root of 13 squared. And again, the square root undoes the squaring. This simplifies to one factor of 13. And again, the given square root of the square root of the quantity 25 plus 144 does not equal the square root of 25 plus the square root of 144. We know the left side is equal to 13. 13 does not equal the square root of 25 is equal to 5, because 5 times 5 or 5 squared equals 25 plus the square root of 144 is equal to 12, because 12 times 12 or 12 squared equals 144. Notice how the left side we have 13, and 13 does not equal 5 plus 12, which equals 17. I hope you found this helpful. So now we're going to simplify some radical expressions. So we will be looking for perfect factors that can come out of the radical. So the first example we have is the square root of 12. And so the square root of 12, we are going to look for factors of 12 that are also perfect squares. So 12 is the same thing as 4 times 3. I know it's the same thing as 6 times 2 or 12 times 1, but in none of those other examples is one of the factors a perfect square. In this case, my 4 is a perfect square. And we know from our multiplying section, if we break this apart, it's equivalent. So I can write that as the square root of 4 times the square root of 3. And the square root of 4, we know, it's 2. The square root of 3 just tags along. Next example, it's a cube root of 72. So now instead of looking for perfect squares, I'm going to look for perfect cubes. Whatever the index is, that tells you what kind of perfect factors you need. So cubed roots, you need perfect cubes. So maybe you're going to jot down some perfect cubes just to jog your memory. So 1 cubed is 1, 2 cubed is 8, 3 cubed is 27. Maybe you'll use your calculator to help you along. Unless you say, hey, wait a minute, 8 goes into 72. So we could write this cubed root of 8 times, right, its partner is 9. Break it apart. Cubed root of 8 times the cubed root of 9. Be sure to carry along your little cubing symbol, or cubed root symbol. Cubed root of 8 is, again, 2. And then the cubed root of 9 we don't know. It's not a perfect cube. It is a perfect square, grant you that, but we were only interested in cubes this time. Okay, why don't you hit pause and see if you can handle the square root of 700 to simplify. Okay, unpause, here we go. The perfect square factor Uh, 
7 times 100, square root of 7, times square root of 100, right, there's my perfect square, I'll write it in front, so square root of 100 is 10, square root of 7, right, it's an irrational number, we don't know what it is, it would have to be a decimal, and we don't want decimals, we want exact answers, and so those typically will have these radicals in them. Okay, so now we're going to get into the variable types. So these are a little bit harder to see, so I might use a little brute force method um, to get us going here. So this brute force method would have worked for the, the first three that we did. So I'm just going to draw one great big radical, and I'm going to prime factor. I'm going to write out all the prime factors of everything underneath my radical symbol. So 25 prime factored is 5 times 5, and x cubed would be x times x times x. Okay, now since we are looking for square root, I need perfect squares. I need two of the same factor to break free. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to circle all the pairs of identical factors I have. Right, so I have two fives. There's one perfect pair. It gets to move out front. I'll go ahead and go on this side. This is where my answer is going to go. So these two fives, they're a pair. They break free, come out in front. Here's a pair of x's, right? Two of the, exactly the same factor underneath. These guys break out. If they break out, it's just one, right, an x to the first. I have this leftover x. That one stays under the radical and tags along. So this is the simplified version of the square root of 25x cubed. It's 5x times the square root of x. Okay. So let's try it on the next one. So we'll prime factor everything, write it all out. I kind of, I'll call this the brute force method sometimes, because after you do maybe five or six of them using the brute force method with these variable expressions underneath, you'll see a pattern that will make it a little bit easier. Okay, so 72, um, let's see, 36 times 2. Okay, and then 36, I have a little workspace over here. 36 is um, 6 times 6, so I have 2 times 6 times 6. So 2 times 3 times 2 times 3 times 2. Okay, oh gosh, and then I have all of those x's. And I have x times x for my x squared, and I have 5y, so y, y, y. Y, and everybody's multiplying, right? Okay, so we're looking for perfect squares. I need two of the same factor to break free. I'm going to try to squeeze my answer in right below here. So let's see, I've got a 2 and a 2. They come out as 1. I have a 3 and a 3. They come out as a 3, right, 1, 3. This 2 here, right, I still have a 2 factor underneath. I don't have any more 2, so that's going to be left over. I'll have to remember to go back and get that. Let's see, my x's. There's a pair of x's that can come out. And let's see, y's. There's one pair that comes out. And here's another pair that comes out. And I don't have any more pairs, any more right, groups of two factors underneath, so I'll go ahead and draw my radical symbol. Everybody still under stays under. And the only other step we're going to do is just tidy up all that stuff out in front. So I have 2 times 3 times x times y times y. And then 
then a radical 2y. So this here is the simplified version of square root of 72x squared y to the fifth. Okay, two more examples. I'm not sure I'm up for another brute force method. Okay, maybe one. And then the next one, the last one, we'll try and um, see if we can see that pattern. Okay, I'll change color so this next one stands out. So I have a cubed root of a to the fourth, b to the fifth, c to the sixth. Cubed roots, I need three of the same. I thought I'm going to have to go all the way across. Okay, a to the fourth, a times a times a times a, b to the fifth, one, two, three, four, five, c to the sixth, two, three, four, five, six. It is cube roots, so I'm looking for three of the same. There's one group of three of A's that come out. What a leftover A. No other twos that'll match with it. B's, let's see, there's a group of three. Comes out. Two left. Not at a third one. I need three to break free. C's, here we go. There's a three that come out. Um, here's another three that comes out. All my C's are gone. Underneath, right there, everybody escaped to the front. So now the radical symbol, anybody who got left behind, A and B times B. I'll write that as B squared. So that last step of just tidying up the stuff out in front. So I have A times B times C times C. So A, B, C squared. And then square root of a, b squared. So do you see that pattern that we're, we can use to simplify the variables underneath? Notice I had an a to the fourth. I was looking for perfect cubes. Okay. So okay. I could take three of the four out as one and that left a one underneath. The three, right? It's almost like a, a divide and a subtract, or a subtract and a divide. How many threes go into five nicely? Right, so that this b to the fifth, I was thinking of as a b cubed times b squared. Right, so the perfect cube comes out as a b, the b squared, got left. My c to the sixth, well that's a c cubed times a c cubed, right? Two perfect cubed c's, they come out as that c squared. Okay, so let's see. If you're not ready for it, just brute force it. Get a big long line, write them all small, and circle groups of five. If you want to rewrite it, so now I would write the x to the seventh. I'm looking for fifths. So there's an x to the fifth. It's left over would be x squared. Ten. Five goes into ten nicely. That means all the y's come out. So how about a y to the fifth times a y to the fifth? z to the thirteenth. So that would be how about z to the fifth times z to the fifth times z cubed? Um, you might recall multiplying like bases add the powers to go backwards. Okay. Everybody that's to the fifth, it breaks through the fifth root, comes out singular. x to the first, y to the fifth comes out y to the first, y to the fifth comes out y to the first. Let's see, so I took care of this one, I took care of these guys. Z to the fifth comes out. Z to the fifth comes out. Took care of those two. And go ahead and write that leftover, a little fifth in there. I have an X 
squared. I have a z cubed underneath. Last step and we're done. X out front. Y times Y is Y squared. Z times Z is Z squared. Radical. Squeeze your little 5 in. X squared. Z cubed.